1869, the brilliant Friedrich became a professor of philology here at Basel University at the age of only 24, the youngest in its history. With his first book, which he wrote while he was here, he began to gain a reputation as a radical and subversive thinker. In his work, which he called The Birth of Tragedy, he started to grapple with the issue of how to deal with suffering in a world devoid of God. And for inspiration, he turned to the ideas of the Greeks and a new focus of his devotions, the German composer, Richard Wagner. On the 22nd of May, 1872, the foundation stone was laid for Wagner's Festival Theatre. One of the guests at the ceremony was Nietzsche. The two men had met six years before when Nietzsche was just a student, and immediately he was smitten. Wagner became both an obsession and an inspiration. Nietzsche would come to believe that in Wagner's work, he'd glimpsed what it was that made life itself worthwhile, art, and that the greatest art form of all was music. Nietzsche believed Wagner to be an artistic genius whose music was going to bring about a cultural rebirth based on the classical Greek model of tragedy. It was an art form that Nietzsche was convinced could transform a world full of suffering into something beautiful and meaningful. How did Nietzsche come to write The Birth of Tragedy? I mean, what, what was he trying to do with this book, do you think? Nietzsche wrote The Birth of Tragedy after a series of incredibly intense conversations with Wagner. Wagner was developing a revolutionary theory of art where art could transform society. Nietzsche wanted to provide the philosophy for that. He found in Greek tragedy a model for that thinking. Greek tragedy tells these extremely visceral stories of human beings in conflict, suffering, destructive. Yet it was the dominant genre of thinking about the glory of Greece. Consequently, he found in Greek tragedy a way of talking about the human being today, the human being as a suffering, finding meaning in life, finding the truth. So what is so explosive about what he's putting down on the page? Well, Nietzsche structured his book around an opposition between two Greek gods, Apollo and Dionysus. Apollo stood for light, for the truth of logic, for control. And since the beginning of Germans' love of Greek, they associated Greece with rationality, the beginnings of philosophy. But Nietzsche decided he wanted to focus more on Dionysus, the figure who confuses boundaries, who discovers ecstatic group activity, dancing, wildness, the visceral feelings. And he made that the center of his tragedy. So he was standing against philosophy, against his own subject, against that sense that logic is the way to truth. He wanted to find another sort of truth, another transformative power. But how does he think that Dionysus, with all his darkness, and as you say, chaos sometimes, and loss of control, how is that going to help mankind? Nietzsche was reacting against the dominant German intellectual tradition, which focused on the individual hero, the Oedipuses, if you like. And they saw that the individual who suffered could somehow transcend themselves through suffering, a very Christian message. Nietzsche reversed that and saw instead that the individual somehow lost themselves in the collective and found in a group experience an ecstatic transformational experience and that's what he saw in Wagner's music and that's what he saw in tragedy so that somehow the suffering that was everybody's condition 
was transformed through this ecstatic experience into an affirmation of life. This life, here and now. It's a bit like that sense of a rock concert. Okay, the idea that you somehow you lose yourself in this great ecstatic collective experience. And one should never forget that opera in the 19th century was the rock music of its time and Wagner was the rock icon of his, of his day. And Nietzsche believed that's a way that society could be transformed through a sense of the collective experience from which you could go out and change the world. Wagner's theatre was a temple to his brilliance, but it was also the place where Nietzsche fell violently out of love with his hero. When Nietzsche came here to watch a performance of Wagner's opera, The Ring, he hated what he found. Rather than a place of revolution, the theatre was stuffed with the great and the good of Europe. And the man that he'd revered as a radical, who he thought would catalyse the birth of a brave new world, was just the hero of a self-satisfied festival of opera, revelling in his own glory. Nietzsche stormed out of the theatre mid-performance. It marked the beginning of the end of their friendship and a new phase in Nietzsche's philosophical quest.